eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Claire. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so just this past week, I know that you were called in to baptize and confirm a baby yes. who was just born, but had a lot of complications and needed operation. And I'm sure you encounter a number of these situations where you're called in to baptize and confirm babies, and not all of them live. Yeah. And sadly, some of them are passing away. What do you say to parents to help them get through this nightmare and to give them hope? You mean about the baptism and confirmation? Um, well, doing that and then just handling the grief that comes with it. Well, I mean, Fairfax has, I think there was 13,000 babies that were born there last year. I remember a nurse said between thirteen and 15,000 babies were born there last year. And Fairfax is a major hospital for NICU, which mm. means a lot of sick babies. Um, it's, also, it's on the second floor mostly. That's where the babies, that's where the NICU is. And again, with that, you know, I get calls that such and such um, couple uh, wants me to baptize their baby because the baby is not expected to live. That would be like next week. Mm -hmm. And when the baby's born, they're giving me advance notice or the baby's going to have this serious surgery. And, um, and then can I baptize? And we should never really baptize just out of convenience, mm -hmm. you know, because we shouldn't even baptize out of fear. Like, right. what if? If we have, if we believe that the baby's going to be fine, then we ought to operate in hope and right. faith, and the baby should be baptized in the church. It, should, it shouldn't just be done out of convenience. But of course, we give a long leeway to because the parents, you know, they're 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 anxious about their child. And the assumption too is that the parents are Catholic and will raise the child. So if if the baby survives, then yeah, I would say that's not even. I mean, the people who are asking me to baptize and confirm, that's, that's always a, almost always a given. Okay. I mean, that's almost a given. I mean, if, if, they, if, they, if, they, if they weren't particularly Catholic or, you know, practiced in their faith, almost never do they even request this. Okay. So okay. That, that, that is, that's, in fact, it's, it's, the, it's, the more, it's the more devout that are requesting it because they see what baptism is about. Okay. Um, again, but baptize a little boy named Patrick. And usually they're surprised when I confirm them as to be sac sacrament confirmation. And I use yeah, the sacred nice. chrism, which is the bishop does the chrism mass. In fact, it's, it's, it's the reality that all the three sacraments are meant to be done together. Like we do that at the Easter vigil. We do all three sacraments. So um, it's baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Yes. You know, the sacraments of initiation. But of course, with an infant, you know, the mouth is so small. Yeah, they can't have it. But if you had a situation like a, a six-year-old mm -hmm. or a 10-year-old even that was never baptized, or even an adult. Okay. You're even an adult who's never baptized. You do all three sacraments. Um, so, and I see the baptism and the confirmation is that how, as sacraments of healing, meaning, you know, we become a child of God. We become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Original sin is knocked out of us. Um, so we become a child of God, temple of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like spiritual radiation. with no. It's like radi spiritual radiation with no side effects. So we, we mm -hmm. receive that grace, and the disease, the illness, is, is associated with sin. Not the personal sin of the child, mm -hmm. but sin in general. Original sin. And so you are, um, so we, I see how, you know, that God's grace coming in and kind of we're praying that he knocks out the illness. Uh, it strengthens the child. And then you see, you know, so baptism is a sacrament of, of, of rebirth. Mm -hmm. You know, a child of God. Confirmation is a confirmation of the sacrament of strength. Be strengthened. Be clothed mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. You receive power. So when I baptize to confirm, um, I'm asking the parents to... Um, to like pray for healing. Yes, and also to in the off chance that something terrible happens. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to err on the side of baptism. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a case where 
um, there was a um, a couple who only spoke Spanish, only spoke Spanish, and they wanted me to bless the baby before the surgery. And the priest had called me to speak Spanish, and I said, and he said, this is a perfect time for baptism. And I, I agreed, but I think part of their thinking was that they didn't want to do the baptism because I didn't speak Spanish. Oh, okay. And, but that shouldn't be the reason. So he graciously and lovingly came into the hospital. Oh, he was a prisoner. Uh -huh. And I mean, he was their pastor. Right. And he baptized, baptized these children because even though I don't speak Spanish, we can have an interpreter, right. of course, but you know, if the child's going to have this serious surgery, me saying the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in English, right. the baby's still baptized. Right. You know, the party should not be the most important thing. Right. The sacraments. The, so he was able to communicate that. But it's beautiful that he was able to do it in Spanish. So I'm very appreciative. In fact, I, there's a number of priests that if I have that scenario of like, the family only speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. which is becoming more and more common. Right. Um, then I have, a, I have a group of priests that, I feel like would always come in. I'd be there in the room with them if they want to be there. But then you're, it's a win-win for the couple because right. they're getting the baptism confirmation too, but also in their language. And also they're, they can even work out the details of doing the um, other parts of the sacrament in the church. Oh, great. So that's, that's kind of protected. And um, so again, I've, you know, um, it's a great blessing for a couple to know that their baby has been baptized and it even confirmed because those leave a permanent mark. Mm -hmm. So sac the sacrament confirmation, while not ne necessary for salvation, should, should, should be done, it should be encouraged because mm -hmm. you go into eternity with it. And it's also a sacrament where it's strength, strengthening the child or young person or even adult mm -hmm. or even elderly person, strengthening them and then that God's grace Comes. And yes, I have seen healing through these three sacraments. I've seen um, healing that has happened, and I've seen um, natural healing has been accelerated. Mm -hmm. And and I've also seen children that have lived forty one minutes, thirty minutes, forty one minutes, three mm -hmm. days, two weeks, four months, six months. Right. Uh, the whole spectrum, right. but. They have gone to God. I'm sure that receive the sacraments. I'm sure that gives the parents a great comfort, knowing even though they've lost their child and the grief is awful, I'm sure it gives them comfort to know that they are baptized. Yes, and also too gives comfort. Sometimes you you're in the hospital and you're a situation where the baby's in the in the womb and the baby is not going to survive. He's not going to be born alive. Well, didn't you say one time you were actually in the delivery room? Yeah, I was in the delivery room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually held the baby before the parents did and baptized in front of the baby. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's a beautiful yeah. gift. So, you know, we pray for all those parents who do lose their children, but at least they know they're with God. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. For the sake of